if a person is, is to be declared wanted, it should be seen that first and foremost, there was an invitation. If that invitation is torn down, there should be a repeat invitation. But from nowhere, you, you say a professor, a lecturer in the university, Delta State University, and the president general of a kingdom is declared wanted. Now, having said that, we, the Robo people, we condemn that declaration in an unmistaking terms. I'm on my way to the police to declare my innocence to the police. I know nothing about this heinous crime. Uh, I'm the traditional ruler, yes, I'm the traditional ruler of a Yoruba kingdom. However, I know nothing about it, and uh, I'm going to the police to turn myself in. The worst of it all is the conduct of the commissioner of police. This majesty gave himself to the police. Now, the police on their own, in trying to run away from their statutory duties, handed over our royal majesty to the army, thereby making the army, the complainant, the prosecutor, the judge, and the jury in his own court. But now the global uh, community and other communities in the Niger Delta are accusing uh, the Nigerian military of high-handedness, making it impossible for people to return to their communities, uh, declaring eight persons wanted, including a traditional ruler, not allowing the community to bury their dead. That's on one side. On the other side is the uh, legal question that has been raised. Namely, that the military in investigating and handling the matter is overreaching itself because both the Constitution and the Armed Forces Act you know, do not give the military the powers to arrest to uh, civilian status, to uh, investigate, to prosecute, and that, that is the function of the police. And that even as grievous, as tragic as this situation is, that what uh, the defense headquarters should have done is not to declare people wanted, but to hand over the matter to the police to see to its logical conclusion, since civilians do not fall under martial law. What do you have to say in response to these two major criticisms out there in the public? When you have a joint tax force, joint tax force inv involves members of the armed forces, that is the Army, Air, Navy, Air Force. We have the police, the DSS, the DNIA, every other security agency are part of it. So when we have arrests, we have joint investigation team. So it is not like the army is taking laws into their hands. The commissioner of police bring the handing over, handing it over to the joint tax force. The joint tax force has the police component. And because they are the ones having the mandate to operate, that's why he handed them over. So he's equally, we have the police components that are there. So it's a joint investigation that is being conducted. We have set up a board of inquiries also from outside to also follow up. Uh, and we're sure other questions will be asked. But what we want to, um, uh, Nigerians to understand, that we are all Nigerians, we love Nigeria, we put our lives in line for Nigeria, and so we'll not do anything against any innocent Nigeria. We are only after the bad guys. And, you know, I've had comments about what were they doing and all this. And once we are deployed on operation, we have the right and the mandate to arrest all acts of criminality within that area. So they were there deployed legally, they were doing a legal operation, and it was because the commanding officer felt the threat was not that high. That was why he went there and felt he could discuss with the individual. He did not go armed. That gallant officer, if he had gone armed, he would erase everybody in that place. But he felt these were people he knew, these are Nigerians that he could talk to. We, our people died. Human beings died in the process. In the process, a whole community, as we are told, was raised down. A, a raising down a community made up of children, young women, uh, women and then elderly people. The story is that uh, some soldiers uh, were, were killed. I want to say here, yeah, for those who care to know, if they don't know what happened and what led to that event, they should dig deeper. In digging deeper, they will find out what actually happened. Just because there are a group of criminals, cultists, militants, that because they make a lot of money from crude oil theft, 
believe they are both bored. And they did this deliberately just because the commanding officer and his team were ensuring that any acts of pipeline vandalization, uh, crude oil theft, illegal refineries were completely eradicated from that region. So that's part of the issues that came up.